Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All in Crypto here and welcome back guys to what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. As always, if you are new to my channel and finding yourself on my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out the subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one around 1pm UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space. But also the broader markets, we take a 360 view of the markets to help us derive our positions and you guys will know that we got long back at the start of 2023 and it has been nothing short of an amazing year plus at this point and we are seeing bitcoin and the technical roadmap that we set out for it coming to fruition we were looking at the technical level a key technical level getting taken that was going to set us up in a bigger inverse head and shoulders pattern we have now had fundamental news that has accompanied what was technically signaled and we are going to be looking at that the bitcoin story is really an etf one a spot etf one in the united states and I think Bitcoin is going to do a similar thing to what gold did back in 2004 when it had its first ETF and the likes of BlackRock started pushing it as part of somebody's a smart portfolio, a diverse portfolio and the S&P back in 1994. And actually yesterday we saw iBit lead with $3.3 billion. iBit's BlackRock, which is BlackRock's iShares um, ETF, is seeing similar volume to what some of the large cap stocks are doing and the S&P or the QQQ, the NASDAQ, I should say the S&P slightly higher, but the QQQ NASDAQ itself. This is insane. And this was all technically signaled. And this is why we champion technical analysis. We are going to be starting the video off there and looking at uh, Eric Balanchunas' comments on this. Then we're going to be diving over to the Bitcoin chart. We'll be looking at the fact that all this is happening pre-halvening. So the real supply crunch is still to come, ladies and gentlemen, and we have a technical target for Bitcoin at 150k. It's likely going to smash that. We are still waiting for alt season. We will talk about that. Although our altcoins are doing well, um, yesterday was interesting because Bitcoin at one point was up 12%, then it went down to 4%, and the altcoins just went, you know, from a trader's point of view, uh, and we don't um, encourage trading on this channel really with uh, leverage on crypto, we encourage investing. I think you guys can, and this is not financial advice, do very well just from being on the right side of the trend, and we try and keep you on uh, that trend. But yesterday, for somebody like myself that does trade with leverage in the crypto space, you don't want that. You know, you want to be. Our portfolio does very well. And you want to unlock my portfolio, do consider becoming a Patreon. We put up yesterday's meeting, literally yesterday. Um, very good meeting. And you guys get the chance to ask me what you want and unlock my entire portfolio. Also, you had some issues with Coinbase that we're going to look at. We did publish an article on it. Kraken were completely trolling Coinbase, actually, just to show you that <laughs> very quickly. This is from Kraken's official tweet. I retweeted it. Just in not down. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. And I love humor. Um, unfortunately, humor is becoming, uh, in the world that we live, very censored. Uh, people can't take jokes anymore and you can't, um, you know, have a joke perhaps at somebody else's expense. And I'm always the butt of a joke and I don't mind it. Um, but let's talk about what took place yesterday and why Bitcoin did what it did. And then we'll dive over to the Bitcoin chart and sort of summarize it technically. So this is from Eric. If you're not following Eric, Please do so. I have no affiliations. I've never even spoken to the guy, but he has been somebody that's kept me very informed. Twitter is both the best and the worst place for information. There is real alpha on Twitter and somebody like Eric provides that. Um, it, his tweet goes, Riddick, the new nine doubled their volume record set Monday. This Monday they set a record. It's doubled since then. With just about six billion... Six billion dollars traded. iBit, which is BlackRock's iShares, led with 3.3 billion dollars of it. Fidelity did 1.4, both double their previous record. The total number of trades was double two. Over half a million individuals traded uh, Bitcoin uh, or between them. iBit alone equals the volume of QQQ. Now, what is QQQ? That's the NASDAQ ETF. I mean, the beautiful thing for us is we're technical traders and this was all technically signaled. We can tell or guess the news before the news. That's, that's wrong, actually, of me to say that. We know there's going to be fundamental news that accompanies what we're looking at technically. This roadmap that we've set out for you guys has been followed beautifully. There are, I don't think there should be any of you left that don't believe in technical analysis if you've been following the channel for long enough. And we're going to get into a little bit more detail on all that, but I want to I thought Eric's um, summary of all this was brilliant. Uh, he does go and show the chart, which you won't be able to see properly here, but you can see it properly here. Look at this. iBit's um, 
BlackRock is in, in, in the yellow. And look at this for volume. I'm interested to see what the CoinShares report is going to be this week. Um, let's continue to read on this tweet before we dive into a few more things. Uh, let's get back to the news. Um, so if we add in GBTC, the 10 still destroyed our records, which was um, from day one. So it's taken uh, GBTC out to show you this. And if you add it, it's even more inflated. If we add in the Bitcoin futures volume, ETFs like uh, Bitto, and there's, there's, there's leverage futures ETFs, we'll call this the Bitcoin ETF complex. They did well over $10 billion. Here's what that looks like going back to iBitto launch in 2021. I'm saying that so wrong. It's Bitto, not iBitto. Um, look at this. I mean, this is insane, guys. This is just bullish. And everyone's flipping bullish. The famous bears on Twitter are now bullish. We're just waiting for Capo to capitulate at this point, who, by the way, I'm pretty sure is a bot. There's no way. Um, so I asked around to some market makers, and most say this volume is largely a function of natural demand versus algo arb type volume. So we are going to see that come online. A lot of the volume, why the volume kind of is fixed on the S&P and other indexes is because of the... the uh, but it is bots, but it's it's algorithms that will basically trade pips. Um, and you're still going to see all that for Bitcoin. So you're going to see real inflated volume for Bitcoin as we move forward. And that's going to be even more. You've got to think the halvening. We'll talk about halvening in just a second. We'll bring up that chart. So um, word is Wirehouse Platform are seriously looking at adding them soon. I'm sure pressure is mounting for them. Uh, they like to see track records and get paid off. But with grassroots demand like this, they are going to have to um, expedite. Because imagine being Morgan's advisor and your clients want iBit and you have to be like, I don't want... Yeah, so th there was a lot of people that weren't actually going along with Bitcoin and facilitating it. I think it was Vanguard and uh, Morgan Stanley. Um, they've both changed their tunes. You know, I actually looked at something yesterday and I'm going to try and bring it up, see if it's in my Twitter bookmarks. And it was actually to do with, here we are. I'll bring this up very quickly. Morgan Stanley is launching a European Opportunities Fund that will invest in Bitcoin futures and spot Bitcoin ETFs, probably nothing. These guys were totally against it. You know, the, the whole world is changing. We're cautious on Bitcoin in terms of the narrative and, and the fact that people think it's the road to freedom. I'm not convinced. I think, you know, it's a globalist agenda that we're moving towards. And anyway, let's not... Uh, let's look at the, the charts, guys, to kind of summarize all this. You know the score, you know the plan. And I've been telling people to stick to it. We used Amazon as a great schematic. And actually, they're in a similar place. So Bitcoin's at approaching highs. We'll look at what it's previously done. I would expect some sort of congestion here. I don't think it's going to be much. Just like we said, okay, this could be enough of a sort of pause after the break. Um, if we take a look at Amazon, we could see here Amazon. This was our, like, look at this. Look at how well this is following. And it's doing it in the same manner. Break, big volume coming in. All these people calling bearish on Amazon. We're saying it's going to $263. And we'll see. Technical analysis versus news-driven traders. We'll see what happens. And this is at highs. You're going to get a break for all of this. Bitcoin is in an uptrend against the stock market. Just to show you that very quickly. This is gold. It's in an uptrend against. in an uptrend against the SPY and the NASDAQ. And it's just the market loves you, you know, and it's just giving you rewards and, and technically saying you're right. You are approaching highs. Um, you did the same thing here. And of course, expect some congestion. I would. Um, but I don't. I think it's going to be short lived. I don't think you're going to get quite a right shoulder ask for. I don't know, to be honest, you know, and that, that if you did get that, just like you got this smaller one in the market, go up and down in this fashion. You could be talking 200k Bitcoin, which might align with what gold did in 2004 and Bitcoin. If you take it off log, I mean, it just looks like you've not really done that much compared to the, the prior cycle. Um, with this being the high, and you've still got a long time to come. This is all happening pre halvening, so we are getting very close to the halvening. Um, and it's doing slightly a different thing, you know, it does come close to all time highs. Certainly, it didn't hear, but th this, this, this is just amazing. You know, we're still waiting for alt, the real alt season to take place. If we look at Bitcoin dominance, yeah, I still think we're in a roll area. I don't think this is going to go too much higher. Uh, and I think actually you've got likely a Ethereum ETF coming. We're looking at ETH BTC pairs. 
I'm happy holding alts right now. Um, it, it, I, you know, even though we were calling 15, 16K Bitcoin to get back in and we showed you guys that uh, yesterday, um, and we certainly posted some stuff on Twitter about those calls. Um, we aren't massive Bitcoin. You know, I'm, I, I think altcoins are going to outperform. That's the bet I've taken. But Bitcoin has been the star of the show. You know, you have to say, look, certain people have been right on that. Certain people have been wrong. I, even though right on Bitcoin's price, not so right on... on Although we do have altcoins that have outperformed Bitcoin. Um, but if you look historically at Bitcoin and the total market cap, it's not until the market's done quite well or kind of come up that it really starts to roll. So I don't think we're that far off it. You know, we look at others' dominance, which is another barometer that we're using for um, alt season. I still think this is going to find support here. I think this could do some sort of a falling wedge-esque thing and, 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 you know, still rally off of this and go towards that 20% mark. So alt season isn't, isn't that far off. Um, obviously, yesterday as well, to really report on the news, you did have, let's go over to Brian Armstrong's Twitter. Um, you can see... The first thing, people's balances were showing zero on Coinbase. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was, you know, I mean, I'm a self-custody guy. I like Ledger. Um, Trezor, you know, I like I like self-custody because you don't really have that problem. Um, but a lot of people do use Coinbase. I think, I think actually Coinbase is perfect for some. People that aren't savvy or uh, don't want to take that extra risk, hey, I have no no beef there. I think Coinbase is a great exchange. Coinbase is a stock that we're long, by the way, uh, and doing very well off of. So we're delighted with the large surge in traffic. Apologies for any issues you've encountered. The team is working to remedy them. Uh, we are aware that some users may say may see a zero balance across their Coinbase accounts and may experience errors in buying and selling. Uh, I think this is all fixed. Uh, we had a 10x surge in traffic and load tested it. Uh, this exceeded that number. Wow. Everything that was technically signaled as fundamental narratives for, I love this. Um, crack and tweet, by the way. Just in, not down. Guys, that's really all I've got for you. Um, I am going to be away. We've got some interesting crypto videos lined up for you. We're going to be going and asking the public what they think about crypto. Um, so I'm going to be away for the next two days. Um, or the next one day, I should say. So there won't be a daily market update tomorrow morning. I do have loads of videos prepared for you, though. We're going to be talking about what the real Web3 is. We can talk about things like the metaverse and all this sort of stuff. Um, um, and obviously, we've got videos lined up. So we're not going to leave you uh, high and dry. We will be releasing videos. There just won't be a daily market update tomorrow morning. We'll probably put a different video in its place. Um, let's see what happens. You know, this is an uptrend. Don't bet against it. Don't look for too much downside and be greedy. Uh, don't be a bear um, because... I mean, what are you doing at this point? And there's still people out. I still see them. I still even get my some of my own people trying to push that narrative. And I'm just like, I, I don't know what you're looking at right now. What what chart are you looking at that says bearish? We're even bearish on the dollar at this point. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.